My name is Dr. Srinivas Kasuma. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon affiliated with Ingalls Memorial Hospital of, of University of Chicago. And then we're here to talk today about the SI joint, and it's a common cause of low back pain that's often overlooked. So the sacroiliac joint is a joint that basically connects the very bottom part of the spine, which is the sacrum, to your ilium, which is the wings of your of your pelvis. It's a very deep joint that, that you can't really see on one specific x-ray, one specific MRI. And it connects your sacrum to your pelvis and it moves in a very different way than all the rest of the joints in the body. Abnormalities in that lesser movement can actually cause very significant pain uh, in the buttock and in the back areas of your, of your body. So there are a couple of different major causes of SI joint pain. One of the most common are traumas. So if you fall, um, if you get injured at work, um, if you twist your hip abnormally, a lot of the joints, the joint itself as well as the supporting ligaments and muscles can get stretched and can get injured in that process. Uh, another very common cause is just degeneration, wear and tear, because that joint does move. Um, over time it can uh, deteriorate and cause pain along that joint. Uh, the most common symptom is really pain. People will point at their buttock right in this area right here, right over that joint, and that'll sort of cause, that'll be one of the telltale signs that it's really their SI joint. Um, they'll occasionally have some trouble walking, a little bit of pain, or a little bit of a limp, because they're trying to relieve some of the pressure on that joint. But those are usually the telltale signs of, of joint and the SI joint. Usually if it's hip pain, it's sort of more to the groin. If it's pain in the back, it's a little bit higher up. And so I'd say about 15 to 30% of the patients that present with low back pain a lot about 15 to 30 percent is actually attributed to the SI joint and then in patients that have had a previous lumbar fusion I would estimate about 40 percent is uh, 40 percent of continued pain in that buttock region is attributed to the SI joint. If I've narrowed down the diagnosis of the SI joint then I discuss with the patient what steps to, to do next. If, it's, if they're really miserable then we'll sometimes have them see one of my pain colleagues to talk about getting an injection directly in the SI joint if they're in mild pain, but they're not ready for an injection yet, then we'll do some physical therapy to see if strengthening the muscles and the ligaments around that joint provide them some relief. And then if that doesn't work, then we can always try an injection afterwards to sort of determine if they do get any relief at all when you inject directly into the joint. Well, I had a work accident and, um, you know, I was walking with the cane. I had a lot of pain in my hip. Uh, that went through the x-rays, MRIs on my hip, and there really wasn't a problem there. And then Dr. Kasuma suggested that I go see the pain doc and try getting the injections. So I received, like it was almost immediately, um, that by the time I left the appointment, I was receiving relief from it. So the reason I, I, like, I like the IFU system over just traditional screws, because when you have the triangular uh, system that comes with the IFU, it provides a little bit more, more rotation and helps prevent that rocking motion of the SI joint. You know, I fuse gave me my life back. I was, wouldn't be here and be able to live the life that I'm living without doing it. Well, Dr. Kasuma is great. Without him, I probably would never have known what the issue. So he definitely is the man for the job if you need it done. Uh, SI joint disorders are very commonly overlooked by other physicians. So if you're having any of these low back pain symptoms and haven't got relief from other methods, feel free to call my office to for a further evaluation, either here at my Flossmore office or in the Calumet City office. The time that I got the accident and the time that I had the surgery was about two and a half years, you know, so I wasn't able to do a lot with the kids as far as doing the sports and stuff like that. And also I wasn't able to work at all. I work a very physical job, carrying and climbing ladders. For the first time in the past three years, I was able to take them to an amusement park. You know, I was able to take them to Disney and you know, before I wouldn't have never been able to do any walking around, anything like that.